So the first thing you'll want to do in Recycle is load your loop in. I've already done that here. And the next thing you're going to want to do is to figure out how many bars your loop is so that the original tempo gets entered over here. It's already brought in the original tempo from the loop here, but this is the effect and not the actual working tempo. So I'll go ahead and count this out and see how many bars it is. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, two bars. Simple enough. Hundred and seventeen point five beats per minute. And I always like to turn on the effects so that I can hear what's happening. These are the effects of how the actual loops or how the actual slices of the loop are going to sound. And uh, it's set by default to one millisecond. Lots of times I'll just turn this off because I don't need a, a ramp up time on the beginning of my loops, especially if I'm doing, say, drums. And if you want to be on the safe side, sometimes you can just set it for a very, very small amount, 0.2 milliseconds. And the stretch time is how much sort of a reverb tail is going to have on the end of each beat slice. 40% um, to me is pretty extreme. I don't need that much. I'm not going to make those such big tempo changes. So I like to usually turn it down to about 24%. Usually works pretty well. So we'll play the loop again and make sure that sounds okay. So like I said, if I did want to make a change here and listen to the effects, that's why I have the preview toggle on. I'm not doing any of that right now. I'm just doing some beat slicing. I will turn up the sensitivity here, start creating my slice points. This is something that's really important that I like to do. As I'm going along, I'm going to recognize where the transients are and I'm going to start locking them down using the lock tool here. Because as I slide the sensitivity up, it can get pretty crazy with all of the uh, transient markers in here. And I may not be able to see exactly what I'm doing. I don't need to set this first one because that's the beginning of the loop. So I'll keep sliding this up, get some more. And it makes it really easy to see what I've got locked down, the transients that I want to keep, the transients that I don't want to keep the transient markers, I should say, which are going to be each one of my beat slices. So I'll keep moving this up here, getting some more. These are great. These are perfect. Here's another one over here. Coming along really nicely. So now, right now, we're doing pretty good. Um, I like to audition the slices as I go along. You can also use these forward back slice guys up here. So now I'm going to play this next slice. I can already tell this next slice has two uh, sub beats in it or two beats, the primary beat and then the sub beat that looks like maybe an eighth note. Okay, so we're going to have to work on that one. That's great. Those are all good. There's another one with uh, more than one beat in it. And there's another one down there at the end with more than one beat. Okay. So I'm already at like 66% on the beat slices here. I'm going to keep turning it up. It's going to start getting crazy in here. See, like we don't need all those right in the middle there. We don't need that one. But look, as I turn it up, I was able to pick up this other, I think this was a snare drum here. Audition it. Beautiful. I got this other one over here. Great. So now out of what did all those beat slices, I got some extra ones here. I don't need those. I don't know about that one. I'm not sure about that one. So I'll turn the slider back down here so that it goes away and I'll play it again. Listen to the whole, uh, the whole slice. I think I can get away with that one. Basically, it sounds like one beat. Keep turning it up here. Aha, there's that one at the end I wanted to catch. That's definitely a sub beat there. 
and uh, so we've got all these locked down and then we've got these extra markers here. We don't need the extra markers. We've got the main transient markers locked down. I will turn this back down and get rid of all those extra ones. And then I will step through all of my beat slices again and take a listen. That's perfect. All of those are right on the mark. Every single one of those transients represents a single beat. There are no additional divisions within the beats. You can hear on this one, this is a great one because you can hear that the snare and the clav are hitting exactly at the same time. It's one beat. Uh, this one I was a little kind of curious about. But again, that's just one beat, but this one. Same thing. What about this one here? That looks almost like there's a transient right there. But again, that's the uh, snare and the clav hitting. So there you have it. So now, just to demonstrate with the preview on or off, if I was to turn the attack up here, uh, we should be able to start hearing these the, the beat slices will actually ramp up in volume here. You can save that effect if you wanted to, but again, I'm just going for straight beat slices right now. And I'll set it back to uh, point 0.2 here. And here's the original tempo that's going to be written with the actual rex file. At this point now, we can go ahead and save it, and we'll be able to open it in another program like Reason in a Dr. Rex player. I'll just save this to my desktop for a moment. And now let's go to Reason and open up Reason. I'll just go ahead and create a Dr. Rex loop player. I'm going to browse for my new Rex loop. And I just saved it to the desktop over here. So where is it? There it is. Even auditions it for me. Load it up there. There it is. And uh, while we're at it here, let's uh, go ahead and copy this to track. Remember it's two bars and I have this set at bar 17 so that's going to be eight of the loops. I'll go ahead and copy them to track. how it sounds slowed down. Actually, it's, it came in at 120 because that's the default tempo of this particular Reason song file. You can slow it down to, I don't know, 90. Or up to 130. 136, actually. filters here. And there you have it. Creating your own Rex file using Recycle.